Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. Zero tolerance in the Senate for retaliatory behavior toward anyone who comes forward. Investigators hired to probe the scandal that has rocked Beacon Hill. The acting Senate president is here. There's much to discuss with Harriet Chandler. People should be worried because it's going to take us a, a decade to try to fix. Their focus was really helping out corporations. Bay State Democrats powerless to stop the $1.5 trillion GOP tax overhaul. What now? And... Holiday gift shopping for the political class. We'll show you what we came up with. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone. It is Christmas Eve. But wait a minute. Does that happen in the morning? It's not. I is think it it's still all, Christmas Eve? All day is Christmas is it still Eve. Christ all, day. all day. All day. Okay, that's the consensus here. It's all day. It's Christmas Eve. But the world of politics knows no holidays. I'm Ed Harling, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wood, our guest this morning. You just heard from her. She ascended to a top position on Beacon Hill when a scandal rattled the Golden Dome earlier this month. Acting Senate President Harry Chandler is replacing Stanley Rosenberg at the moment during an investigation of a possible influence peddling and sexual misconduct at the State House by his husband. She is a Worcester Democrat who has been serving in the Senate since 2001. He also served in the House, so thank you very much and, and happy holidays. Thank you. Happy Thanks holidays to you. Thank Merry you Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, so let's get right to it. How confident are you that Stan Rosenberg, who has been your political compatriot for many, many years now, that he will return as the president of the Senate? I don't think that's the right question to ask, if I might say so. I think the question is, how thorough is the in investigation that we're going to do? How thorough is it, is it going to be? And hopefully it will be very thorough. We're not whitewashing anything. We're trying to be transparent. We have just hired a firm to do the investigation, and clearly we are not stopping until it's completely done. So you're not willing to weigh in as to what Not is, at all. And so you have no idea whether he's going to be back or not? Absolutely not. He is a member. He is a member. He's elected by the folks in Amherst. Uh, but what happens will depend completely on what that investigation shows. Uh, this, this must be personally painful for you since you are, you have been good friends with Mr. Rosemark for so long. I think it's painful for everyone in the Senate. It's painful for everyone in the legislature because, you know, you, you paint us with a very broad brush and, and something like this really affects everyone. So uh, it, it is painful, but we really believe that the institution is so important. It's a venerable institution. It, we serve the people of Massachusetts, and it's very important that we don't whitewash anything you, here. You have, you have hired a, a, a firm. And the we firm, have hired and the a firm. The firm's name is? Is Hogan and Lovells. Okay, very good. And how, how long, I know, I, maybe you can't answer this, but how long do you anticipate it might take? We, we don't know. Y yeah, you're not we, predetermining we a barrier. We have no idea. It depends on, you know, an investigation can take lots of hiccups along the road. And, and then, therefore, how much is, taxpayers are paying for this? Senate is paying for it, absolutely. So, and you have no idea what the bottom line is going to be because you have no, no idea how long it is going no, to be. No, but we will certainly make that public through the controller's office. I mean, that there's no secrets about this. Uh, many people on Beacon Hill are walking around on tiptoes these days, not only in the Senate, but also over in the House. Are you worried about more allegations being made public, both about the Senate and the House? Well, I've heard the same rumors that everyone has heard. I don't know anything more than anybody else knows. But quite frankly, the world is walking around on tiptoes, on eggshells right now, because we're in a conversation across the country on the whole issue of sexual harassment, sexual assault. And it's really talking about power, men, women, power. And uh, that's what we, where we seem to be as, as a country right now. And of course, we reflect it in the legislature as well as businesses and other, other places. This can't be anything, though, that it, it in, in, in your time in public service, have you have you witnessed similar behavior maybe 10 or 15 years ago that for some reason became acceptable that is no longer acceptable today? I don't think it was ever acceptable. Right. I think that the issue here was that, and it was women usually who were the victims, women who really had no place to turn, no one to talk to, no one worried about their jobs. We've seen that across the country and many of the allegations that were made. Uh, now we realize it's not just women, it's men and women, and it is a power issue. So, so let's talk about the Senate presidency. Uh, there are three women and a, and a man interested right now at being in the next Senate president. You've asked them to suspend campaigning, but in this environment, how important do you think it is to have a woman? Should a woman 
I don't think it ultimately emerge. I don't think it makes any difference yeah. whether it's a male or a female. To be honest with you, I think hopefully the best person will 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 uh, rise to the presidency. It will be a decision made by my colleagues in the Senate. But will a message, a different message, be sent to the voters of Massachusetts if the Senate? For some reason, the next Senate president is a woman. Would it be um, a message to people? Will, is it a brand that you would welcome? Well, I always welcome women getting involved in politics, Janet. I, I, I hope we'll see more of them. But to do that, we'll have to see more women in the pipeline, and I'm certainly encouraging that. But you've got uh, three women now. That we've are got three women, but what, you know, this is only the beginning. I believe that before we're through, we'll see more than the four that have already thrown their hat in the ring. So just just because the show is called on the record, you don't want us to be. You don't want the permanent position. I do not okay. want that. I you just heard wanna, it here I first. I just want to ask you that. I do not want it. Why I, wouldn't you want it? Right. I, it's an enormous amount of work. It's an enormous amount of of responsibility. It's not the work. I've always worked hard. It's the responsibility. You're running uh, a very venerable chamber, and. Uh, I am not 20 years old, as you all know. The world knows. By the knows way, it. happy birthday! I know you celebrated Thank you. an Thank important you. birthday this it's past week. It's a very important birthday, and I was never one. I never hid my age, but clearly, I didn't expect to turn 80 in front of the world, and I did. And you know, it's better than the alternative not turning 80 at all, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. What day is your birthday? Just It was yesterday. Yeah, okay, very good. Mine was the 14th. That's the only oh, reason very that I good. asked. All right, you ready for the OTR pop quiz? I have in my hot little hands the OTR pop quiz. This is, look at the look she's giving me. There should be a <laughs> camera on this right now, the look that I'm getting here. All right, since, since you ascended to the Senate President's office because of a scandal, we thought we would walk down the corridor of past Beacon Hill misdeeds. Oh. Here's question one. And we'll start you off relatively easy. In 2008, the FBI had incriminating photos of what Beacon Hill figure stuffing envelopes into her shirt. Diane Wilkerson. The former state senator pled guilty to attempted extortion in 2010 and went to prison. Question two. Former Speaker of the House, Sal DeMacy, went to prison for extortion after a scheme with what computer company? I don't know the name of the computer company. Yeah, that, 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 that one, sort of, you know, everybody remembers Sal, but they don't remember the computer company. And, in all honesty, when we went through talking the questions, the, the name didn't sit on the top, but it's Cognos. It, it, oh, that's right. The Cognos. Yeah. Cognos U, ULC. Cognos and you should be aware of ULC. the fact that the lead uh, the lead investigator in our investigation that's about to commence was the lead investigator for yeah. the, that's correct for, 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 for the yeah. uh, DeMacy yeah. issue. We continue he was a prosecutor on the, back he then. He was a prosecutor then. We You're continue absolutely on right. the record with the Senate President.